Today, I drop something. Oh, f I make more manly noises. Whoopsie. And I mess something up. You are absolutely kidding me. Oh. God damn it. What's good? It's the Hunter Hoffman back with insane content. We're back on the mini again and making good progress. This video will be a little bit different as there will be no music and I'll be using a wireless mic this time and no voiceover. It's going to be a long and good one. Let's do this. All right, so first we're going to lay down some towels if I can find the beginning of it. All right, now let's get that cylinder head in here. Yep, that's heavy. Don't drop this. Don't drop this. Let's see. So now we're going to remove the um, push rods and keep them in a logical place. Let's move this gasket first. Okay, so grab a piece of cardboard. I always have this problem. Okay, that's better. So that's one. All right, so that's our cylinder one. This should be one. That should be eight. 16 minus eight is eight, obviously. 10 minus nine equals one. So that must be one then. This must be seven. So that's lucky, as in lucky number seven. Six, the amount of cylinders my BMW has which is an M2. Five. I had five slices of pizza yesterday, so that's pizza slice. Four. The amount of coffee I had today. Three. The amount of friends I have. No, 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 wait, that's too much. I'm almost at three million subscribers, so that's subs. Two. So last night I made love to two, right, right, female. All right, so time to remove this rocker assembly. There we go. So as you can hear, I now have a microphone. Kind of new to this game. Usually I do everything in voiceover, but um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Shout out to my friend Varner, by the way, for hooking me up with this microphone. He was actually one of my first subscribers. Thanks, homeboy. All right, so let's take this assembly off. There we go. Look at that. It's like a piece of art, man. I feel like shredding from M539 Restorations. Just talking to myself. So this is seven, this is six, this is five, four, three, and two. There we go. Let's put this aside here for a second. All right, so first we're gonna remove this bracket. Okay, so we're gonna give this a fresh coat of paint. All right, that's ready for some primer. All right, so now for a bit of primer, we're gonna hang this bad boy up. Enjoy some first person painting. 360. Oh, sick. All right. All right, so as you can see, one of the studs here is missing. So I went and got the stud and put two bolts together so that I can now easily um, get this stud back in again. And there we have it again. Easy. All right, so now let's remove these bad boys. We'll be replacing these bad boys anyway. All right guys, so what I wanted to show you a bit better is that you can see here, this isn't black at all. This is, and here it is as well. It's all quite black. But here, you can see that the head gasket wasn't sealing properly, probably. So I think that's our problem. You can clearly see a, um, a difference in color. Over here, I believe it's not been sealed correctly. Yeah. So if we then look at the car, we can see the same thing going on. So over there, there's um, a clear uh, difference between the firing ring and the rest of the uh, engine block. And then coming over here, you can definitely tell over here that there's like 
no difference between the firing ring and the engine block. So that's probably where the uh, head gasket has failed. All right, so the next step is to remove the valves. And we're going to do that with a valve pincer, apparently. So I've never done this before, so I'm going to go check how this works exactly. Okay, so this thing is too short. Here, let me show you. Whenever I put the top end on the valve and the bottom end, and I bring it all the way down, see it's not even gripping the, the valve. So I thought it would be handy to use one of these. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, that's better. Okay. This is a bit sketchy as it's my first time, but let me see what I'm, let me show you what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's quite sketchy. But now, I believe, oh here, there they are. They have already fallen out, see? Those two metal pieces over there. Those are the things that hold in the valve. So, if I'm not mistaken, if I now slowly release this contraption again, we should have one loose valve. Here we go. Ah, yeah, that's it. All right, so that's our first valve spring out. So that's seven more to go. Okay, so now we've got one clamped in. I wanted to show you what else I bought. One of the metal pieces fell out already, but I bought a magnet on a stick so that I can just like pull this one out like so. There we go. So now that these two metal Metal braces, I would say, are out. I can slowly release the tension of this the valve pincer, like so, and that's one valve out. <sighs> All right. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you that the last valve, valve uh, spring is coming out now. So there we go, this is the last one. Okay, that wasn't the best of tools, but um, yeah, we we've eventually got it done. Uh, let me show you what we have here. So here are our valve springs rods and clips holding the valves down, holding the valve springs down. Now it's time to remove all of the valves. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward. So that's valve number eight, or one, or, or was this, was this one, or, oh God, no. Oh God. So this is of course valve number one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so there we have it. Our cylinder head without valves and valve springs. I bought new seals, so we're obviously going to replace these. Why not? Why, well, let's, let's just remove them right now. I, I think I've got a tool for these bad boys here somewhere. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that's one. So I'm not sure how old these are. They're still kind of flexible. But, yeah, you know, while we're in here, might as well replace them. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's our cylinder head completely stripped. All right, so the next step would be to clean it up with brake cleaner and lap the valves. Never done that before, but um, yeah, looking forward to it. I told you at first we were going to clean up the cylinder head, however, I just found the exhaust manifold and we're going to clean that up first. Whoopsie! Well, perfectly reusable in my opinion. Maybe not in yours, but I think that'll do. Alright, so next up I want to clean up all the valves. I told you again that I was going to do the cylinder head, however, we're going to do that last. We're going to start out with valve, with the first valve. Like Jeremy Clarkson, my, my genius knows no bounds, so I just put the valve in here and now we're going to do it besides the wire wheel. Here, look at that. That's not too bad, isn't it? Alright, now seven more valves to go. You guys don't want to see that, right? Seven more valves. That will be a way too slow video. Alright, so instead of showing you the whole process, I'll just show you the before and afters. Now for the exhaust valves. 
All right, so all these valves are now cleaned. Looking real shiny and nice again. So my plan is to now put all these clips in a container of uh, brake cleaner so that they, they can soak for a bit and then they'll be uh, they'll be clean by the time they'll, uh, they'll get back on the car again. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna clean up the surface of the um, of the cylinder head and uh, see what's what. First, let's remove the bit of excess oil. Okay, let me use a um, microfiber towel or a carbon fiber towel, as Shretton would say. Oh God, where did I leave those? I know there's one in the back of my car. Am I too lazy to get it? No. Yes, no. No! All right, where was I? Now we're gonna use a wire wheel as it's cast iron and not aluminium. It's, it's okay to do this with a wire wheel. Uh, I would never do this on a aluminium cylinder head, obviously, but um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what happens. All right, so after rubbing it down with the wire wheel, I'm gonna softly use a bit of sanding paper with a sanding block. I'm gonna start with 400 grid. Dead brake cleaner though. That is better already. Let's go in for the close up. All right, it's getting better. I think it's lunchtime. All right, so before lapping the valves, I'm gonna go ahead and use this wire brush for a second to clean up seats of the valves. All right, so I believe we can now take a look at lapping the valves, which I've never done before. And then again, how many times do you have to do that in life? Life. What's the meaning of life? Is it to lap valves? I don't know. So what do we have here? So we have a coarse grade paste and a finer grade paste, along with this stick with suction cups on it. So with this, you can grab your valve like so, right in the center and there we go. That seems to work. And then make sure this is thoroughly clean. So obviously we start out with the coarse grade and put a bit on the edge of the valve like so. And then <clears throat> we're gonna insert it in the valve guide. We're gonna start lapping the valves. All right, so this is gonna take a while. So let me set up a time lapse and then we'll carry on afterwards. All right, so what I didn't show initially is that after using the coarse grinding paste, you should wipe off any excess paste of the valve and valve seat before applying the finer grinding paste. Once done, wipe away all of the paste with a towel. So here we have all the lapped valves. You can see they have a shiny silver edge on them. And then here we can see that the seats of the valves have been vialed down. Looking shiny and fresh again. So let's see if this thing is straight. I know this is not the most scientific way, um, but this is like straight as can be. I mean, if you want to have quality, Again, not very scientific, but I don't see any light shining through. I think that's straight as an arrow. Just like me. All right, what I can do is have the top part of the cylinder head cleaned because we're going to paint it anyway. Yeah, we're going to clean this up. Is that enough brake cleaner for you guys? So 
So right over there. We're going to use a Stanley knife to, uh, to get rid of that. That's pretty much gone. There we go. That's all clean now. Okay, we're going to clean it up. All right, so in the end, it cost a lot of time to get it as clean as possible before paint. Hence why I'll show a little time lapse of the work put in. All right, so in the meantime, I'm going to give this bracket a coat of paint. All right, so one more thing I wanted to do is give the intake ports a quick polish. So first we're going to hit it with the wire wheel. Might as well do the exhaust ports as well. So first we're going to hit it with a bit of brake cleaner. Then we're going to get some super polish. Well, that must be good then. No, let me get a um, microfiber towel for this. All right, let's try this again. All right, so for the repainting of the cylinder head, we're gonna go ahead and um, clean up this surface real quick. We're gonna give it a quick sand and a quick polish, and then I'll have a trick to, um, to mask off this area, which will not be painted, obviously. Did off with a bit of brake cleaner. All right, so what I had in mind was to put on this like so through like so these as well you know you know where this is going to right okay like so all right so th in this manner we have the um the inside of the valve cover uh, uh protected and then i'm going to use a um either a piece of string or a piece of rope all right, so I couldn't find any uh, rubber bands, so I'm just gonna try this. Yeah, might as well do the entire thing. All right, so as you can see now, we have a nicely masked off cylinder head. Yeah, that'll do. That's gonna work just fine. All right, so next up, we're gonna mask off the thermostat housing as well as the spark plug and spark plug holes and these ones as well all right that's the thermostat housing done looks pretty neat neat that's a word i haven't used in a while this is a sharp ass blade guess where it's made by the Germans, yes, of course. The Germans made it. All right, what's next? How am I gonna mask those bad boys? What about these bad boys? Ha! Huh. That's funny. It could work. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use these bad boys. They're actually of this seat, which I'm seating, sitting on right now. Yeah, lots of old stuff in here. Uh, let's see. And that's four. All right. This is for the alternator bracket. That doesn't have to be masked off. This is for the cylinder head studs. Right, so this is for the... Oh, I know what this is now. This is for the um, vacuum line bracket. What I can do, however, is still mask off the manifolds. It would have been handier to remove the studs, come to think of it now. Okay, I'll remove the studs anyway. All right, so that's the studs removed. Now we can mask this off properly, grabbing our German razor blade again. That looks pretty good in my opinion. This is ready to go for paint. Thing is, the paint's not in yet, so we have to wait for that to be delivered. Uh, so in the meantime, we're gonna do something else. So let me show you this freshly painted bracket. 
Okay, so these are the studs of the uh, manifolds, so I'll give these a quick clean. What a bit of brake cleaner and a wire wheel can do, right? So I had these clips soaking in brake fluid, and now I'm going to clean them off and then lay them out to dry. So here are all these clips completely cleaned. Alright, so in the end I managed to um, mask these holes as well. I thought maybe with the clamping force of the of the nuts holding down the cylinder head to the engine block, I didn't want paint to interfere with that, so I might as well um, cover these off. Then I used the um, gasket as a template for the masking off of the thermostat housing. Uh, for instance, if you look closely over here, you can see there's a small indent. I don't want any color differences over here. So that's why I trimmed it a bit. So yeah, that should all be fine now. So I thought in the meantime, I can give the uh, valve springs and valves a clean so that they're ready to go in the cylinder head once it's painted. So lots of brake cleaner, lots of wiping down. Let's do this. So now for the valves. And that's the last valve. All right, so we might as well continue with these bad boys. And these bad boys. Cold. All right, that's the last one of our things. All right, so the final piece will be the rocker assembly. Again, lots of brake cleaner. It has a lot of dirt and debris on it. I'm gonna wipe that away. Kaboom, baby. Oh wow, look at all these marks of these rocker arms. It's pretty cool. Don't think a lot of people would say that's cool, but I call it passion. God, I need friends. So apparently this one, apparently this one is fixed as opposed to the others that can move freely. All right, so that's one clean rocker assembly. And the bolts for the rocker assembly, I had them soaked in brake cleaner. All right, guys, so here we have the cleaned up parts for the cylinder head, including the new valve stem seals. So once the cylinder head is repainted, we're going to put this all back together again. All right, so welcome everyone to my state-of-the-art paint booth. So we're gonna give this a quick final clean with some brake cleaner. Well, let's go ahead and do this before it turns dark. It's already getting dark. So we're gonna use Motip engine paint. No primer is needed with this stuff. All right, so that'll do, I think. I mean, that does look good, doesn't it? Ugh. Don't drop this, don't drop this. You are absolutely kidding me. Oh. Damn it! That's terrible news because now... Alright, because of my little mishap, uh, paint has come onto the surface of the cylinder head. So yeah, that's pretty stupid. These things happen, fortunately. So um, yeah, we're gonna sand this down a bit until the, well, the paint is um, absolutely gone. Alright, we're gonna start off with the 400 grid. That is coming off nicely, luckily. It was obviously a very minor, minor uh, coat of paint, but you know, we had to get it off. It's coming off rather nicely. That feels really smooth. Yes, it feels very smooth. 
I think it's time to uh, to unpack it and then see what the results are before we're gonna clean it up and build it back together. All right, so let's take it inside. All right, let's try not to mess this up again. All right. Well, I haven't dropped it. It's a good start. All right, so let's do some unboxing, which is quite popular on the internet. Is it? Is it still? I'm not sure. Let's just open it up for a second. Mm, let's see if I can open these by hand. I can actually. Good. Here we go. Oops. All right, that worked rather well. Come on, be good, be good. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now for these bad boys. Uh, good. 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 And good. So my masking off skills were quite good here, I'd say. So now for the spark plug holes. Uh, how are we going to do this? Lay it on its back. Uh, and then push these bad boys out. One. Two, three, four. And as this car has four cylinders, that was it. Let's check it out. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. It's nice and clean. So now for the final part, which is the exhaust and inlet manifolds. All right, let's do this. All right, so I'm glad how this turned out. All right, so we're gonna clean all this up and then I think it's time to reassemble everything. Now that we have our cylinder head, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna give it a thorough clean. So we're gonna clean it out with brake cleaner so that all the valve guides shall be clean. The inlet manifolds, the exhaust manifolds, everything should be as clean as possible. Unfortunately, I don't have any compressed air, so we're gonna have to do with just the force of the brake cleaner. Again, it's not a race engine, but um, we'll get it as clean as possible. <laughs> Gently rub it, because I don't want any of the um, paper towel particles to be stuck in these passages, feed lines. Uh, I mean, push rod spaces. Still gotta get used to using a mic. I used to do everything in voiceover, so in that way you could, you know, obviously think through what you're gonna say. Now I'm just rambling on a bit. Not even in my own language. The good thing about brake cleaner is, is that it evaporates relatively quickly. So you'll never have any remnants or, yeah, remnants of uh, brake cleaner left in your cylinder head or wherever. Can't really show you, but it looks very clean inside, actually. So now for the top part of the head. You see, not necessarily any gunk or nasty stuff. I think that's a clean cylinder head, boys and girls. Or, well, boys, actually. I doubt that any girls would watch this. We're gonna use the black pearl once more. All right, guys, I think we got ourselves a clean cylinder head. All right, so the first thing I want to do is put in the studs on the other side. So here we have our studs. All right, so that's the studs installed. All right, so next up we've got our valve stem seals. So what I'll do is I'll squirt a bit of oil, obviously the correct oil on top of these, and then seal them on the valve guides. So now we're gonna do the valves. Then we're gonna oil all these guides, like so. And then we're gonna push in our valves. That's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So next up, we're gonna install the springs again. Okay, so apparently the camera cut off because the memory was full. Um, well, in the meantime, as you can see, I have already put in the first valve spring, which was terrifying. Um, so I managed to use, um, I managed to find this one now. I think that's gonna be a bit safer. Previously, I used this one as a bit of an extension for this piece, um, but that slid like everywhere, so that was pretty unsafe with such high um, tension. So idea is to use this like so, so that it can't go anywhere. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll just see what um what happens. We get ourselves a valve spring. There we go. Oh, oh, that's so much better. All right, so now we tighten this bad boy until the spring is compressed sufficiently. Maybe it's for the best that you didn't see me trying the other, uh, the first valve. That was seriously kind of sketchy. But you live and you learn. You live and you learn, I guess. All right, so a few more turns. All right, so now I can grab these clips and then put them in place carefully. There we go, finally. And now we just depress it, like so. All right, that was still a bit of, a bit sketchy, but as you can see, that's how you do it. All right, so now for the rest, I'll do a time lapse, because this might take forever. All right, so that's all the valve springs installed, along with the locking clips. I am gonna oil these up a bit. So next up is the, oh yeah, right, are the push rods. Move this bad boy over here, like so, obviously. And then we're gonna drop in the push rods. I'm gonna oil these up a bit. I'll just do it by hand. I can remember this from pulling the cylinder head of the engine that the outer push rods fell through. Once we're going to put the engine back together, I'll put the outer push rods in their place. Put these in here. All right, so now the rocker assembly is what we're going to do. We had thoroughly cleaned this before. All right, so this is the rocker assembly. We're going to oil these up as well like so. Then we put this on the engine, like so. Like so. The respective marks of all the arms of the rockers line up perfectly with all the, uh, with all the valves. So then, <clears throat> yeah, so first we're going to do this one. So we're not going to torque these yet, because there is a certain sequence in which you have to torque these all down the nine cylinder head bolts and the four bolts for the rocker assembly. There's a certain, again, there's a certain se sequence which you have to follow. So that's why we're not gonna torque them down as of yet. Um, yeah, so that's the rocker assembly done. All right, so now for this final trick, I know I, it's, um, it's purely for show because we're gonna remove these uh, afterwards once, once we're gonna um, adjust the, uh, the, the clearances of the valves. So these have to be gapped at 0.85 millimeters. So that's this one, I suppose. Can you see that? Tight and healthy. So these are already gapped correctly. Again, this is just for show. I wanna see how this looks. And I believe you guys will want to too. All right, so there we have it. You know what, I'm gonna do one more thing because I also did this bracket. I painted it black, as you can see. Once you go black, you never go back. All right, that's it. All right, so let me show you. I mean, just look at that piece of art. All right, so that's gonna be it for today. Uh, next time we'll obviously put this in the engine along with the new head gasket 
and uh, we'll see what's up. All right, so that was it. As I said, we're making good progress on the mini. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this new style of video. Next time, we will be back on the M2 with some new goodies. And afterwards, we're going to reassemble the engine of the Mini again. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time!